With more and more work happening in urban areas, the chances of somebody walking through your work zone goes up exponentially. That's why work zone protection is so important, and we're gonna talk about it next. Let's go. Work zone protection requirements vary a bit at state and local levels. But no matter the standard where you work, they're all based on the Federal Department of Transportation requirements and are enforced by OSHA and state or local police. I'm here with George Kerstetter. George, thanks for being here. What's the main purpose of work zone protection? So probably the best way to describe it is the use of temporary traffic control devices to help prevent traffic from entering the work zone and diverting it to protect the workers throughout the day. So what needs to be considered before you start working in one of these areas? Yeah, there's several things to take into consideration. So the time of day, the traffic, the volume of it, and the speed of the roadway. And then as far as the proximity to the work into the roadway or if it's off to the side. Like we're here on, a, on an active road right now. How would they block oncoming cars if they had to get something out of their truck? So the best way is to place the channeling devices in a manner so that it helps keep them out of the path of the traffic and gives them just a little extra room to be able to work and get to the side of the vehicle. So let's first break it down to the main area within work zone protection. First, personal protection. So based on the time of day, you wanna have the correct high visibility vest, whether it be a type two or a type three your hard hat to prevent things from falling out of vehicles or getting sucked out of the back of a truck, your steel toe shoes, eye protection, and anything else that's required for the work that you're conducting. So you mentioned that high vis varies from the time of day. So what would be the difference? During the daylight hours, you'd like to use a type two vest. And at night, you'd switch over to a type three vest to make sure that you're visible to all oncoming traffic and any pedestrians throughout the work operation. So what exactly is the difference between high-vis type two and a high-vis type three? So the type two vest doesn't have sleeves. A type three vest, which is what I'm wearing, has more retroreflective material and adds a sleeve to help identify you a little bit better as a human. So we're here on an active street. What about traffic control? So based on the jurisdiction, you may have to refer to your written traffic control plan but you wanna make sure that there's signs set up, that there's temporary traffic control devices set up, and that helps to ensure that motorists have the best chance to see workers in that work zone. If this street had more cars coming down on it, would you put flaggers at both ends? Yes, especially if we're encroaching on a lane, it would give us the opportunity to ensure that motorists maintain a safe distance, not only from themselves, but from our workers in the work zone. So this site right here, is it compliant? Let's take a quick walk and look at it. Taking a look at this vehicle, we have it placed so that if anyone were to enter the work site, we'd be protecting the workers downstream. And then we have these cones placed so that we prevent any vehicle from moving in an unnatural pattern and then put those drivers at risk. Besides making sure that we've directed traffic in a safe manner around the work zone, we also want to make sure that we've accounted for the pedestrians and making sure that we have this area coned off, there's caution tape, and we've directed them away from the sidewalk to protect them from falling into any open trenches or holes. George, thanks for giving us the scoop on work zone protection. Thanks for watching and stay safe.